Hi guys, this is C.A. Balakrishna from lecturepedia.in. Till previous video, we have completed 400 series. Now we will be starting with 500 series. Okay, the first standard SA 500 audit evidence. Basically, a very simple standard which is easily understandable. SA 500 audit evidence what is meant by this audit evidence basically the objective of the auditor is to give opinion on financial statements now in order to give opinion auditor need to base his opinion on certain evidences okay without any evidence auditor cannot give his opinion okay whatever the opinion he reaches for such opinion he need to have evidence okay thereby audit evidence means the information used by the auditor in arriving at conclusions on which auditor's opinion is based okay that is a simple definition of audit evidence now entering into the standard basically i have divided this standard into three parts okay the first part deals with how to obtain audit evidence basically audit evidence will be obtained by performing audit procedures what are the various types of audit procedures that are available that will be discussing next characteristics of audit evidence what are the characteristics there are two characteristics sufficiency and appropriateness we will be discussing uh, regarding that next specific procedures that has to be followed by the auditor in case he decides to use work performed by management expert okay this one we'll be discussing basically at ca final level these two are not so important okay these two are not so important this third concept would be important and for ca inter students these two would be important okay now starting with the first section or first point how to obtain audit evidence we have to obtain audit, auditor will obtain audit evidence by performing audit procedures what are the various audit procedures audit procedures first one inspection basically this inspection will be performed regarding three aspects what are they auditor will inspect records auditor will inspect documents auditor will inspect assets okay inspection can be performed regarding these three aspects basically inspection will be performed to address which assertion inspection will be performed to address assertion of existence okay that is inspection of records documents and assets next observation observation will be uh, in relation to a particular process or procedure let us say management is performing inventory counting this is a process or a this is a process that is being performed by management now the auditor will observe this process in order to obtain audit evidence okay that is regarding observation of a process or procedure next confirmation let us say in the financial statements data is showing so and so figure now auditor will get confirmation from those respective debtors you know by requesting that third party debtor to give confirmation of the amount okay that is a confirmation third party confirmation that will be obtained by the auditor even this is also one of the audit procedure next recalculation basically this recalculation will be performed by the auditor in order to check mathematical accuracy okay let us say entity has given a certain figure of interest okay uh, management has calculated interest on loans taken and that figure has been provided in the financial statements now the auditor in order to verify whether the uh, interest expenditure that is shown in the financial statement is correct or not he will recalculate the interest expenditure okay even this is also one of the audit procedure to obtain audit evidence next reperformance auditor will reperform the procedures 
that are you know performed by the management next analytical procedures this concept of analytical procedures i have already discussed with you the example relating to inventory and sales okay that example i have told you in uh, 300 series i have discussed that you can watch them next inquiry auditor will inquiry basically inquiry consists of asking questions okay auditor will question various parties both internal and external parties in order to obtain audit evidences these are audit procedures that the auditor will use in order to obtain audit evidences next moving to the second part characteristics of audit evidence just a second i'll just check whether recording is on on or not yes moving to the second part characteristics of audit evidence basically there are two characteristics of audit evidence first one is sufficiency and the second one is appropriateness now sufficiency deals with a measure of quantity okay let's say auditor is obtaining audit evidence relating to particular aspect okay particular item in the financial statements now how the auditor will determine how much of audit evidence has to be obtained okay that is sufficiency okay basically auditor will determine based on his professional judgment whether the amount of audit evidence that has been obtained relating to a particular matter is sufficient or not okay auditor will he use his professional judgment and this sufficiency will be affected by two factors one is risk of material misstatement okay if the risk of particular item is very high then the auditor will obtain more audit evidence in case risk of uh, material misstatement of particular item is very less in that case auditor will obtain less audit evidence okay that is relating to uh, how the amount of audit evidence will be affected by risk of material misstatement next it will also be the amount of audit evidence that the auditor will obtain will also be affected by quality of that audit evidence okay if the quality of audit evidence is very high then the auditor will obtain less audit evidence if the quality of audit evidence is very low then the auditor will obtain high uh, uh, you know high amount of audit evidence okay that is regarding uh, sufficiency of audit evidence next moving to next character that is appropriateness now this appropriateness is uh, a measure of quality of audit evidence uh, we can further divide this appropriateness into two aspects one is relevance and other one is reliability first of all let us discuss with uh, what is this relevance basically let's say auditor is obtaining uh, audit evidences uh, rela uh, relating to some expenditure uh, electricity expenditure in the entity okay now electricity expenditure of particular entity x limited for particular financial year let's say 21 22 now for this uh, auditor has to verify electricity bills of this relevant year 21 22 but he but uh, the management has given electricity bills of 2020 21 whether this this uh, uh, those electricity bills of 2021 are relevant for the purpose of audit of this year no they are not relevant because auditor is verifying the electricity expense of 21 22 then how can he examine uh, bills of 20 uh, you know 2021 it is not relevant that is uh, the uh, the aspect of relevance next reliability now there are certain situations in which the audit evidence obtained will be more reliable let us see what are those situations audit evidence will be more reliable if <coughs> obtained from independent source okay if you obtain any audit evidence from independent third party it would be more relevant than the evidence that is generated internally okay next 
however the audit evidence that is generated internally will be more reliable if the relevant internal controls are effective okay controls are effective if the relevant controls that are operating around that particular item are effective then the audit evidence that is generated internally is also more reliable so this is clear next audit evidence that is obtained directly by the auditor is more reliable when compared to the audit evidence that has been you know presented by the management okay next documentary form of audit evidence is more reliable than oral okay next original you know original document is more reliable than a photocopy okay these are the cases in which audit evidence will be more reliable by that we have completed our second part moving to the third part using work of management expert now who is this management expert see management expert means a person who is expert in a particular area other than other than accounting or auditing because in these two aspects in accounting and auditing auditor himself is expert there is no requirement of a management expert okay apart from these two areas if management uses any of the expert for other areas he will be known as management expert okay let's say for example for provisioning okay mm yeah gratuity expenditure uh gratuity provision basically the entity wants to calculate the gratuity provision for this it has employed an actuary okay now he will be known as management expert okay now auditor relating to this gratuity provision is relying on the calculation made by this actuary in this case what are the precautions that has to be taken by the auditor or you know what are the procedures that the auditor will perform okay when auditor decides to use the work performed by management expert then what sort of audit procedures the auditor will perform let us see using the work of management expert in that case auditor shall evaluate competence capability and objectivity of that expert competence means whether the expert is having sufficient knowledge in the area in which he is dealing okay that would be competence whether that expert is competent to do that uh, that particular work or not and his capability and his objectivity objectivity means whether he will be able to give his decision objectively that means without showing any bias towards the management okay whether he can give his independent decision without any biasedness towards the management or any other third party that would be objectivity now from where the auditor will get information regarding this competence and objectivity of this management expert auditor can obtain this information see sources of information from personal experience with previous work of that expert see let's say now the auditor is auditing a limited a limited has used the work of actuary now previously let's say auditor would have conducted some audits okay let's say previously auditor has conducted audit of b limited in this b limited also it has used the work of same actuary okay in that case auditor will be having knowledge of the work that has been performed by the actuary okay that would be one of the source through which auditor can obtain uh, you know evidence or auditor can obtain understanding of the competence of this particular management expert or discussion with the expert okay 
once you discuss uh, with the expert you know once you interact with the expert you will be able to analyze the knowledge of that expert okay by speaking to him uh, for at least half an hour okay by discussing uh, by discussing various uh, various issues you can easily able to judge his knowledge on that particular area next discussion with other familiar uh, with others who are familiar with work of that expert okay uh, there might be some other people who might have used the work of this expert in the past now if the auditor discusses with those people then auditor will get an idea of knowledge of this expert next published papers and or books okay if the expert has published any papers or any books by reading those books also auditor will get an idea of the knowledge of this expert next qualification membership etc okay through these sources auditor can obtain an idea of competence and objectivity of the uh, management's expert next next uh, after obtain after evaluating competence and objectivity of the management expert what the auditor will do is he will obtain understanding of work of management expert okay first of all auditor will obtain understanding of the manage uh, of the management expert after obtaining understanding of management expert now he will obtain understanding of work that has been performed by the management expert okay how he will obtain a uh, he will obtain uh, first of all he will see whether there are any uh, standards or whether there are any regulatory requirements that uh, that are applicable to the work performed by the uh, management's expert uh, let's say in 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 our case for auditing and accounting there are uh, you know respective standards there are auditing standards and there are accounting standards our work will be as per those standards in the same way uh, for actuary also whether there are any standards applicable uh, this the auditor will see if the standards are applicable he will check whether the work has been performed as per those standards or not okay see he will see any professional regulatory requirements apply to his work okay next he will evaluate or he will understand any assumptions and methods used by those uh, management's expert okay in this way auditor will obtain understanding of the work that has been performed by the management expert next after this evaluate appropriateness of management's work okay auditor has first of all obtained understanding of the management expert next he obtain understanding of the work performed by the management expert now auditor uh, you know decided to use work performed by the management's expert as his audit evidence now he has to determine whether that work is relevant to the purpose of the auditor okay management expert is good and his work is good but whether his work is useful to me or not that has to be decided by the auditor so he will check he will evaluate appropriateness of management experts work in this he will consider relevance and reasonableness of experts findings okay uh, if at all any findings are made by the expert whether those findings are relevant and reasonable for the purpose of work of the auditor next reasonableness of assumptions and methods used uh, used by those uh, management's expert and relevance accuracy and completeness of source data okay the data which has been used by the uh, management expert for uh, you know arriving a conclusion is uh, complete and reliable or not that will be checked by the auditor okay this is how auditor will you know obtain understanding of uh, management expert in case he wants to use the work performed by the management's expert as a audit evidence okay this would be important for cf final level okay it doesn't mean that ca inter students can skip it even you should go through this by this uh, revision of sf 500 has been completed and uh, another information in case you wanted to purchase uh, paper 6d or paper 4 classes you can uh, at ca final level 
you can visit our website lecturepedia.in okay bye bye take care